Hi, this is Michael Kennedy from Developmentor. Today I want to talk to you about adding validation to your ASP.NET MVC forms. ASP.NET MVC has a lot of great features for building input forms for your users. You can easily use the HTML helper uh, methods to create text boxes and labels and so on, but it's especially powerful when you look at its validation features. ASP.NET MVC uses a concept called model binding, and along with model binding, it uses something called data annotations to add declarative validation to your forms. So let's go look and see why we might want to do that. So why do we need validation? There's a couple of reasons. One, our application cannot accept invalid input. It'll uh, mess up our database, potentially a required column that can't be uh, null is missing, or we're just going to have bad data in the system and we want to prevent that at the front end as much as possible. So users can enter invalid data and they might do this on accident, they might not know any better, they might just be careless. However that happens, we want to help them prevent that. So the first thing we want to do is absolutely prevent the data from going into our system. But at the same time, we need to give rich user feedback. We can't just say there was an error or not accepted or something. We need to say, you know, that email address that there is there, that's required, and it has to be in this format before it's accepted. Things like that. So a uh, second reason we want to add validation and use uh, the MVC techniques is it adds a rich layer of feedback to the users. And finally, we want to prevent any sort of hack attempts. Right? There could be some sort of vulnerability in our application that if we omit certain types of data we can just sneak our way in or do some sort of uh, malicious behavior so we want to make sure that both users and hackers are not allowed to enter invalid data. So let's go look at an example. We're going to switch over here to ASP.NET MVC and we're going to create a new project here. This is uh, ASP.NET 4, .NET 4.5, Visual Studio 2012, that sort of thing. So I'm just going to create a project and uh, this will take a moment. So we're going to create a, let's start with a basic application. Okay, so here we go. Now, suppose we want to make a, uh, some kind of blog application where we've got blog posts and maybe people can add some comments. So let's imagine we want to write the form that lets people add comments to our, an existing blog post. As, and, and that's the thing we're going to add validation to. So give me just a minute to actually create the blog application and we'll add validation to it. All right, so now I built a really quick blog website. Just took a moment to throw that together, and it really just consists of a single page. Let me just run it and show you what it looks like here. So as you can see, very simple. This is my blog. It has a post. This is the text of the post down here. If it had comments, the comments would be showing. And then it has this ability to add a new comment. But there's a small problem is that I could enter stuff without uh, having an email without having a, a comment. I can in fact just submit this over and over and you can see that it's adding basically empty entries into our fake little database that we have here. So that is a problem. You need some validation dude. Alright, so obviously we do need some validation. Let's go see how we might do this in MVC. Okay, so just really quickly, let's look at the, how that form works. So you come in, you make a request for a particular post. It doesn't really go to a database. You can see we have a fake DB. So it just sort of pulls out some data, some fake data, something that uh, makes it look uh, a little bit real. And we show that post. And then uh, over here in our post uh, class, or sorry, our post uh, razor file, we show the, the post text. We go through each comment. And we write out so-and-so wrote whatever they wrote, and that's why you could just see wrote, wrote, wrote over and over and over there. And then we also have this uh, begin form that goes to our post model, which has a new comment uh, sub model, if you will, which uh, is where we actually work with creating the new model, and that's what we post back and what we really work with. Uh, just note that it's kind of interesting that you can do nested properties here, and MVC takes that just fine. So let's go look at our post model. That's the thing where we're going to actually add validation. So over here in our models folder, let's look at post model. You can see we've got this post class and it's got a list of comments. These are read only, don't need to do anything with that. Um, they're gotten out of the database. And we have this new comment. And this is really the thing that our form is sending back and forth. So let's go look at the comment class. All right, so what we want to do is add validation. And the way you do that in ASP.NET MVC is you use a set of attributes 
for example, I can say this is a required uh, field here. And if I say it's required and I click away, ReSharper will say, oh, we don't know what that is, uh, but it looks like there's one of these required attributes over in system.componentModel.DataAnnotation. So let's put that up at the top. Great, so this is required. Um, the name is required. The email is required. We can actually do a little bit better than that. Comment text is required. Um, but this will get us started. Um, let's go ahead and just run this again without making any changes. You might think that that's enough to turn on the validation. It almost is, but not a quite. So let's say not quite. So we'd expect uh, that the email and the comment be, would be required. But if we click Submit, oh, didn't work. So you can see this still went in. It didn't stop it. So what happens is that MVC actually still allows you to post back uh, to the server even when the data is invalid. So what we need to do over here in our method that processes the request is actually check ask MVC a uh, question. And we can say if uh, model state dot is valid, it's not true, then we need to do something else. Okay, so we'll say return view of post model and just return the same data. Now there's a small little glitch that you might run into here is that the comments and the text are not round tripped as part of the form because you know it's a comment it's not the whole page so we have to basically regenerate this uh, the, the stuff that's not round tripped here in order for this to work but let me just show you what's going to happen if I try this first so what I'm going to do is I'm going to submit invalid data it's going to come up here that required attribute will tell MVC that it is not valid it's going to come down here and return this but then you'll see that the text is missing and the comments are missing and we'll get a null reference exception. So if I just click submit, bam, null reference because there actually are no comments. They weren't round tripped with the, uh, the form. So uh, let's just do this. We'll say postmodel.comments and just get that from our database again. Fake db.comments and postmodel.txt. This would also come from our database, but we'll just say for now, we'll just do like this. Okay, so sort of reload it based off the ID. Let me recompile that. Now if I just uh, submit it, well, actually let's not do it quite that way. Let's go over here and just refresh this page. If we come down here and now I try this, so my name is Michael, and I leave off these other fields, you're gonna see something interesting. Bam, oh, look at that. So it came down here and it still entered this. We did something a little bit wrong there. Uh, but you can see that the validation is firing and saying these are required. So that's really nice. All we had to do to get that to happen was sort of two steps. One, in the comment, we have to say the email is required. And in the method that processes it, this post action method, we need to make sure that we don't, um, we don't redirect. We basically stay on that page. So the problem is I just have this out of order here. That's why it showed up. So we don't want to add it to our database unless it's valid. So one more time, let's just see how this looks. Okay, so if I come down here and try to submit something, you can see no comments, uh, mka at mka.com. Try it again, you know, that lights up. And then finally, this is cool. Yay for validation. All right, so that's pretty sweet. All right, only lets it go in there. Try to submit it again. It says, nope, this stuff's required. Now there's one thing that's really missing here. I mean, it's kind of obvious that when this turns red that there's kind of a problem, but you'd like a message like, hey, there's something wrong with your page. So let's go add a few things really quickly to our HTML for that. So first of all, let's go right at the top and we're just gonna say at HTML.validation summary. Okay, if we just refresh the page here, we'll see all of a sudden that, oh, the name field is required, email is required, and comment text is required. It's a bit of a strange message to send to a uh, users here, but that's okay. And then also, we might want a little star, although this, this red is, is probably doing it for us. Um, however, if we did want a star or something like that, we could say HTML.validation message for M goes to, same as we have above, M dot, if I could do that correctly, M dot new comment dot name, and then let's just say only show this. Okay, so let's try that again. And you'll see. We get a little star next to the thing that's required. So we could do that for each uh, each one of these if we just added, put in here and change the name to email. 
Now there's two uh, final things that we want to check here, but let's just see that this is working good. So come down here, these are all required. Let's go put something in for the name. Submit that, right, comes out of the summary. The little red thing goes away. Beautiful, this is really nice work that MVC just does for you. However, the, the comment text field is required is not a super nice uh, message. So let's go back to our comment class here and we can say something like this. Wrap this around, we can say, Error message equals you must enter some a, a comment. Something like that. So if I just recompile that, try to resubmit this page, we'll get a much nicer message here. You must enter a comment. So you can see we can continue to work with these um, attributes here. Maybe we'd like to say instead of capital name, you see, let's switch back. You can see, or capital email field. It's a little bit uh, funky. So we could do something like this. We could say um, display name equals lowercase email. Look a little bit nicer. If we don't want to go all the way to setting a custom error message, it would at least be the email field here. It looks a little bit nicer. Okay, so we can do this, and this gives us nice user feedback. But the one thing to, ch to realize is that this is still going back to the server. Let's go back to the home controller, put a breakpoint here. As you might imagine, all of this stuff, when I try to submit a bad form, just goes back to the server anyway. So here comes back the model, is valid as false, so it's gonna regenerate it and tell us the errors. But it's still round trip traffic to our database, to our server, all that. What we'd like is, as I type here, this validation would just fire, and even that that uh, red box should go away because now I've typed in something. So MVC has something for this scenario as well. Let's go to our layout page that affects everything on our site, and we'd probably uh, factor this into a bundle, but just for now, to keep it simple, let's suppose that we're going to go down here after jQuery, put our scripts at the bottom. What we're going to do is go to our script section, and we're going to include two additional scripts. We're going to uh, include uh, jQuery validate min and jQuery validate unobtrusive min, whichever one that is. There it is. All right, simple enough to include that. Now, if I just refresh this page, let's properly reload it. Let's try again. Submit. See, this is a problem, but watch as I type here. See, it's going away. Beautiful, right? And if I take it away, it comes back. Put it there, it goes away. Right? So uh, if you look at the uh, guts of the HTML here, you can see that there's a data dash val required with a message and all these things. This is not um, specific to MVC. This is sort of the jQuery validate stuff that MVC integrates with. So whenever there's an error, it uh, basically sets uh, Actually, before there's an error, it sets the requirements on the fields, and then the, the JavaScript just checks it. So all we had to do to enable client-side validation as well as server-side validation was drop these two scripts in after jQuery. And there's probably a bundle already built, like a jQuery validator or something uh, that we could get. We could check that over here. Not that it really matters. So here, a better way would be to do just this. So something like this would include those, but minified. Okay, so let's just make sure I didn't break anything and try to submit. Looks like it works great. Okay, so that's jQuery, uh, excuse me, MVC validation using data annotations. We saw that we could layer on some jQuery validation as well, but the key trick was uh, two steps. First, we went to our thing that we were sending around and we added required and displayed and there's other ones like I could say that this is the data type of email and things like that. So we added these uh, system.componentmodel.data annotation attributes to our model and then in order to give proper feedback to the user we added these validation summary and validation message and the final thing is in the controller we have to check if the model state is valid or not, because this gets posted back unless you have the jQuery turned on. It gets posted back even when it's invalid to let you sort of process it further and decide whether or not you accept it. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful. And uh, this has been Michael Kennedy talking about ASP.NET MVC. Find me on Twitter if you wanna talk about it. Thanks, bye.